And I move out here. I had no clue what I was doing. It's California. They want diamonds. They want pizzazz. People really don't know my story. They think I'm this guy, Hollywood glamour guy. It's true, but it's not really. If you would have said to me that, you know, one day you're gonna be in Hollywood, designed for the biggest diamond company, you're gonna have a global reach with, with engagement rings. I'm getting ahead of myself, so let me go back a little bit, a little bit. Before my mom passed away, I remember talking to her about my childhood, and she said, when we used to walk with you in the local park in Marine Park, when we came home, I would have to empty out your pockets. They were filled with colored glass. So I guess even at six years old, a little kid, I was fascinated by sparkle and color. I was just entrepreneurial. I was drawing, I was painting, I was selling stuff at the flea market. So when I had enough money saved up, I went to Paris. Started looking at antique shops, 19th century, uh, 18th century, early 20th, I never saw anything like that. And of course, I go to the Tower of London. It's about 20 feet of, of jewels, of the crown jewel. From the moment I saw those jewels there, I was transfixed. It, it hit me viscerally, it hit me emotionally, it hit me mentally. I used that as my inspiration for my collections. Then I started making beautiful rings and everyone was coming. I became like the it guy for, for diamond rings. Everybody was anybody, whether it was from friends, producers, uh, directors, uh, heads of studios. You want a ring? Go see Neil. Go see Neil. Go see Neil. And then I started getting well-known for rings. And then I started getting well-known for glamour jewelry. And then I started, well, the red carpet happened in 93, 94. Hollywood begins to have a pulse. I use all these colored diamonds based on mosaic, based on Gustav Klimt. But jewels that made sense for California, it was about glamour. It was about the golden days of Hollywood. It was about the 20s and 30s. I was on Oprah because of rings and, and glamour and diamonds, weddings. I've had the best time on The Bachelor. You have to find the right ring, and that's what I do on the show. I work with guys that are besotted, they're in love. And it gives me an opportunity to, to, to make rings that on the level of couture. When I went to Africa with De Beers for the first time, I was an ambassador for them. They treasured their diamonds. It was their heart, it was their soul. I mean, people ask me, why do I love diamonds? I mean, how could you not once you understood? Once you understood how a diamond was formed, it starts with carbon. Billions of years of pressure it becomes a crystal, a diamond crystal. And then the human eye that polishes it and they open a window and you see the life force within inside of it. These are mystical. For me, this is magical. This is like God gave the world diamonds. You can't really describe what that sparkle does to the human consciousness. It enlivens it. It is a wow. It touches your soul. It is a small jewel, but the symbolism is great. It's what it represents to a person. It is a manifestation of love. And I try to give it everything. Every angle of the design I consider. Every facet. I love the special place people have them in the heart for them. Being able to take Hollywood and bring it to people and let them have their walk of the red carpet, their night of stars, their magical moment, their Hollywood moment. Isn't it amazing to have that? to be able to bring love and glamour to people's lives and something beautiful. I do this magic work and a little engraving and a little design, spring it with love, we have a Neil Lane Couture ring.